Hi, Steve with Brownells, and today we have a very special guest with us. This is Mr. Bobby Tyler of Tyler Gunworks in Texas. Bobby, good morning. Good morning. Pleasure good to, to see be you. here. Today we want to talk about custom guns, and who doesn't like a custom gun? So let's start out really basic. What is a custom gun? A custom gun is what you make of it. Uh, a custom gun is what suits your fancy. That's pretty easy. And you can take that and go to any extreme, right. or you can keep it super simple. But a custom gun is what is in your heart and what you think a custom gun is. So it can go anywhere from putting a, a little bit of engraving on a factory gun or totally rebuilding it, changing caliber, anything like that? Pretty much. I like to start out by saying, let's get it functional and get it to where it, it is accurate and everything works the way it should before we start on cosmetics. Right, because if you don't have a good foundation, you're not gonna wind up with anything good at the end. That's right. And I have seen beautiful guns that didn't work at all. Isn't that a, just... They were uh, pretty. It's one of those things that's just hard to swallow, though. And, you know, a lot of people have a specialty, you know, engraving, stock work, but they may not know how to take that gun apart that they're working on. You that's know, right. I've seen that. You know, a lot of times people will call in and they'll say, okay, I want to build a custom gun and they want to go into talking about the finish work and the detail work and I right. tell them I am a finish guy I am into the detail work but let's back up and let's start at, at, at number one instead of starting at number eight right so pretty much any kind of firearm can be customized uh, shotguns rifles revolvers automatic pistols sing, uh, single shots I've even got friends in the industry that customize polymer I mean oh. Yeah. No, that's not that's not what I do. That's a but huge thing. Pretty much any firearm that's quality built can be improved. Right. Because most 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 of these are production guns. They're built mm -hmm. on a line, and uh, they build a lot of them. But you can always improve uh, by going in and doing accuracy work. Sure. Action work. You know, sights, grips, um, finish fit. You know, a lot of times what I mean by finish fit, uh, you may have polish marks or you may have imperfections in the metal that you right. want to go away. That's inevitable. Yeah. I mean. The factories have to crank them out to make money so they can't make everyone perfect. Correct. Or we wouldn't want to pay the price. Yeah. No, I completely way. agree. Those old days of uh, cheap hand labor are pretty much gone. I don't know where you find any cheap <laughs> hand labor. <laughs> I wish I knew. Well, let's look at some of these. Uh, what do you got here? Well, I'll start over here, and uh, that is a Ruger Bearcat Shopkeeper made by Ruger. Um, it's got holly grips. I, they're holly wood, but I always say that they're holly, but made out of wood. Right. Um, it's got the color cased frame. Um, this particular one has our full in-house action job, accuracy package. Um, we go through these and I always say we take the gravel out of them. <laughs> um, a Bearcat is a smaller frame than say a standard size revolver. Very small. And uh, so the Bearcat has smaller moving parts. Mm -hmm. And so it's easier to make a larger frame feel better and smoother than it is a Bearcat. It's, it's a beautiful so. little gun. The size reminds me of some of those old Rimfire 32s from the 1800s and that. Right. and. Over the years, they've gotten a reputation as a kid's gun, or, but I'm going to tell you, there's nothing like going out to the range and shooting a Ruger Bearcat. They are beautiful little guns. They're you know, called the jewel of the Ruger line for a lot of good reasons. And the color casing on this is pretty nice. So we even do the stainless hammer and trigger mm. to match. That so way those, you, are, those started out as stainless? They did. That way you oh. don't have that bright, shiny sticking out of a period looking revolver so so the second one that we have in the line here is a another Ruger it started life as a standard Ruger 44 special so then we took and there we go so we took this standard Ruger 44 special we put an octagon barrel we put one of the Furman Garza Mira front sights. Mm -hmm. And I like the one with the gold bead. Yeah. It helps me get a good, 
quick sight picture. Now, as you'll notice, <clears throat> this one has the number five grip frame. The Elmer Keith number five. The Elmer Keith number five. This is not a Bisley. Um, if you'll notice the shape and design, it's just ever so slightly different. It is. And that, uh, that was kind of an evolution, that design. That took some R&D on yeah, Elmer's part. Yeah, yeah. And just so thankful for the, the people that's gone before us that cared so much and worked so hard at, at getting us to where we are today. And this is basically the same concept as his original number five in that it was meant to be a user gun, sort of compact, not huge, right. comfortable to the hand, easy to use, and shoots well. So what we did on this one, the first thing we did is we went through and did the action job, which includes timing, mm -hmm. which includes cylinder timing, um, get, getting it to where everything locks up properly, it's on time, and we went straight into, of course, with a custom barrel, it gives us a, an opportunity to right. do the accuracy package without having to just pull the factory barrel, accurize the factory barrel, you know, do the throat, barrel crown. If you'll notice, it has the target crown. Very nice, very nice. And then, going with this sight picture for me, uh, this was a no-brainer on this setup. I thought, okay, for this one, I'm going with the gold bead, going with the mirror sight, and I want it a good, quick, instant picture that's simple. Sure. And whether you're looking at it from 40-year-old eyes or 60-year-old eyes, yeah, it I'm doesn't there. matter because you're going to have a good, bright picture, and that difference between the black and the brass, you don't have just black on black blending yet. Right. Especially if you're out in the woods somewhere after a white-tailed deer or something. Exactly. So. On this one, I guess we, we went through our build. Uh, we went ahead and decided what we were going to do. I knew I was going with the number five belt mountain base pin. Uh, I knew what rear sight we were going to use, which that's the Bowen, mm -hmm. Bowen rear. And then we just started going through small differences. And now this one here, it once we completed the action job, it pretty much completed. Uh, at that point, we went ahead and went with a simple finish. Mm -hmm. I knew that this particular one we weren't going to engrave. We're going to keep it pretty standard and simp sweet and simple kind of. Very functional. Yeah. So the red stag grips was a, a good way to finish on this one. And as you see, these grips, they're fitted to this grip frame before the finish is put on the gun. Right. And they are hand fit to the gun to where when you get out and you're on the range and you get a good sight picture, you're going to be able to follow right back down on that next shot mm -hmm. and use this grip frame the way it was designed. And that's a luxury you have fitting grips on a custom gun where you're going to refinish it anyway. You can get them exactly flush with the metal Absolutely. where it looks like they just grew out of the metal. And you, you have so many options. I mean, you can go with Mammoth, you can go with Stag. You can go with various wood grips. Right. right. Go back to that question about custom gun. What mm. do you want? And everybody thinks something else looks better. You know, if you know, I get calls all the time. They'll say, well, should I do an octagon barrel or a round barrel? Obviously, that's, uh, that's a cost. It is, but you, if you put all, a bunch of guns on a table, the one with the octagon is going to get picked up more often. It's, a, it's the one I brought. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, What's this... Uh, Set screw back here. That just, is that is a stop. Yeah, for the trigger, so it doesn't overcock. That is exactly right. Yeah. That gets that gets you right to a, a point where. In, you know in how over travel works on a trigger. Same way with this hammer. It cocks just to where it needs to go and no more, which saves you. I don't know motion. Uh, it just feels different. Well, one of one of the things you're after is you want the perfect action. Mm -hmm. You want the perfect hammer travel. Right. But you also want the perfect release. And that hammer starting at the proper place, the trigger releasing at the right time, it all works as a big machine, mm -hmm. all in a circular rotation here, and it all makes it happen. And it's hard to believe till you actually feel it. It feels completely different from a stock gun. It really makes a difference. All those little things add up to quite a bit. They really do. Beautiful gun, obviously. Um, where does somebody start 
when they want a custom gun, they know they want a custom gun because they've seen a cool one at the range or something. But when they walk in their shop, they have no gun. They're not really sure what they want. How do you walk somebody through that process? So you have to get a base gun to start with. You've got to have a platform to build on, just like any construction project. Mm -hmm. And so you can go many different ways. You can, you can get online, you can check out you know, your local gun shop. You can go through one of your big wholesalers. Sure. And I think a lot of these that we build on, they end up being the Lipsy's exclusive guns. I've noticed that. Because they already are working on the, they're already working towards the same goal that we're working towards. Yeah. They're wanting to, you know, they put a lot of time and effort into design to get the proper platform. Right. And all the hard work of uh, the surveying has been done. Correct. You know what the people Correct. want and what they're asking for. So say you're going to build this gun. You can order uh, a basic 44 Special. Uh, if you know you're going to want a five and a half inch barrel or the four and three quarter barrel or four and five eighths in the Ruger, and you think you might want to go with the round barrel, the yeah. Ruger barrels are good quality. We do build a lot of barrels, mm -hmm. but the Ruger barrels, are they're good quality. I've always had good accuracy out of my stock Rugers. So say you're going to build this gun in a round barrel. So my base gun would be whatever barrel length I was going to use in a round barrel. And I would go ahead and, and uh, keep that barrel. Obviously, it would get the crown. It would sure. get the forcing cone. It would get, it would get fit mm -hmm. again. But my base gun would be that particular model. Maybe a custom front sight. Maybe not, depending on the customer. Most, most likely. Uh, front sight is, is such an important part of the build that, to me, height. What I find is most of our front sights are commonly low. Yes. Yeah. So as far as your, your base gun and your base platform, it doesn't have to be a new gun. If you have one in your gun safe and you say, well, how about I just take one that I already own? That'll save me five or $600 off the top of this build. You know, you can approach that two ways. Well, that's part of the reason why old three screw Rugers are going for what they go for is because people want them as a basis for their custom gun. So I tell people, well, if this is an opportunity for you to get another gun mm -hmm. and have two guns. So you've got your, your old original gun and you can have a custom gun or you can take your original gun, turn it into your build. Right. Now, if, if this is going to be like a, a range gun, a play gun, caliber doesn't really come into it. But if it's going to be a hunting gun or something, you got to kind of work with, uh, you know, the parameters of what you're going to be hunting. Exactly. I tell people, figure out what you're going to do with it and then let's let's choose a caliber that's appropriate. Right. Um, and just like this one, I went 44 Special. This was a no-brainer for me. Mm -hmm. I like the 44 Special. Right. Um, I can hunt with a 44 Special. I can go to the range with a 44 Special, and it's one that I can shoot all day. Uh, it's just it's one of my top cartridges that I like. Me too. I've got a 44 flat top Bisley, just stock, pretty much, but uh, the thing shoots great. So once you nail down what you want for your base gun, I recommend you just start going through options saying, what do I want to do to this? So take a big chief, take a pin, and start writing on it and say, okay, I want this kind of sights, I want this barrel length, I want round or octagon. What, uh, you know, and there, there's a little bit of options within trigger pull. Like if a guy says, right. hey, I'm gonna be climbing in and out of a blind, this is a woods gun. Obviously, I'm not going to set the trigger at an unsafe poundage. No. But when or we if do it's a our cold action, weather gun. yeah, when we do our action job, we set it to where it's a good, clean, crisp break, mm -hmm. and that's important that you get a good trigger release, because in my opinion, front sight trigger that you know once you get on the range, you're you're dealing with the front sight and the trigger, and that's the two that components. That makes everything else work. So. You know, whether you have a number five grip frame, you can leave the original grip frame, the plow handle style grip frame. Right. You can go with a regular Bisley. Mm -hmm. You can go with a bird's head. I mean, you've got, you know, a guy needs to do a little research, a little homework. You really should have these types of gun in your hand at some point and preferably shoot them to see how comfortable they are for you because it makes a huge difference. If the gun feels good when you're shooting, you'll shoot a lot better. It really does. That and seeing the sights. So you've got your, so you've got your sights, your barrel, your grip frame. 
Um, at that point, you're going through small details. We use these belt mountain base pins. Um, I like the fact that they lock in and they hold. They don't slip. They lock don't in move. and they're tighter than the original factory. So, and then you get down to the part everybody wants to skip right to the finished part. Um, mm. Do you want to engrave it? Or do you want light engraving? Do you want heavily engraved? It's, it's your baby, so yeah. you get to choose what you want to do. Um, I wanted to stay functional but elegant. Mm -hmm. And so I went with the color cased frame, the royal blue finished parts, and I went with the red stag grips. Um, I, I've done this same gun up in Mammoth before, but I wanted to go with the stag. They're durable, they're economical. Yes, they are. And they look so good on that gun. Yeah, on a blued gun or a blackened gun, those lighter colored grips really stand out and tell you that it's a custom gun. Yeah, yeah, they really do. And the color casing, nice and subtle, you know, not these bright flashes of yellow or anything. I think it's just gorgeous. And as far as durability, I have people say, well, what's the durability? What's the longevity? You know, that's something we need to talk about. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I always tell everybody is, you can't do anything to it that I can't fix. Right. We've already built it once, enjoy it. We're, we're here, we're here for you. That's my job. Yeah. And uh, so our color case, anytime we color case any product, no matter what it is, we put a sealer on it. Offers a 650 hour salt rating, as well as UV protection, which UV is one of the hardest things it is. on color case. It fades it fast. And so, you know, be mindful when you're picking your leather. If, if you'll notice, the leather that I brought and chose for this, it's one of the Barante uh, holsters that is, it's lined. Um, you can go with a lined holster, you can go with an unlined holster, you can go with many, many different choices. You we could do a whole video on just holsters. Oh yeah. Easily. So, in my opinion, if you're going to spend the kind of money that it costs to build one of these, put the time and the love into it that that it takes to, to put one of these together, get a good piece of leather. Yeah, and ask your gunsmith's advice if you don't know yourself um, who he'd recommend because there's a lot of good makers out there right now. There really are. There's, there's several that I work with on a regular basis and out of those, you know, I, I tell people from being a small business owner myself, pick a good quality product and then pick a, pick a good man behind the company, mm -hmm. a good person because you can do business with good, like-minded, quality people That's true. within the same industry. That's true. Now, when you get a, a, a base gun like this and you customize it somewhat, you don't have to be done with it at that point. You can send it back and have something else redone or engraving put on it or more engraving put on it. You know, personalize it any way you like. If you don't like that front sight, change it out. You know, it's not a done deal the first time you get it back. If you don't like something on it, change it. So I had a guy call me recently and he said, hey, I love my custom build. It's, you know, the most fun gun I've ever shot. He said, there's one thing that I'm just, I'm not extremely pleased with. And he said, the front side is not the exact front side that I hoped it would be. Oh. <laughs> and he said, the last thing I wanted to do was call you and have this conversation. And I said, send it back. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is a, this is a deal where your 100% satisfaction is the only thing that we're looking for here because it's your custom gun. I've had customers that were afraid to speak up because yeah. they thought they'd offend me somehow. It's just more work. It yeah. Was... Well, I mean, it, and it's it's my job. Yeah. You know, so, and I want it right. That's the job is to get the gun out the door correctly. We're a small family owned company that every project matters. It's not like I send out, you know, a thousand of these and they're all the same. They're right. all different. Yep. And that's so, the way it should be. That sure does make a difference at the end of the day. Well, let's uh, get off revolvers for just a second because I've been looking at that 1911 there. It looks like a gold cup from here. It is. This is a this is a gold cup. So it's not all revolvers at Tyler Gunworks. No, we do a little bit of everything. Uh, this particular one, we brought in uh, as a stock gun again, ordered through Lipsy's. Mm -hmm. uh, most of my base guns come through there. Okay. And if a customer calls in and says, hey, I can't find a gun to, to use for my base gun, we have no problem 
helping them just Ooh. hop on, find one. It saves them shipping one way. Chances are I can even save them more ways than just shipping. I bet a lot of people aren't aware of that. And so that you it, can do that it helps. It's just yeah. a service that, I mean, we care. Yeah. You know, so what we did on this one is I took this one and decided to push it out a little bit and, and make it uh, everything that, that we really wanted. And if, if you'll notice, this one here has the royal blue finish. Mm -hmm. It has the color case finish on the frame, which is pretty popular these days. It is. I it's mean, been coming uh, on strong. And, it, and the, the, the contrast between the two. If you'll notice, we left everything pretty simple. This one has um, a hand engraved package. This is our fairly standard hand engraved package, if there is such a thing. Okay. Um, this one is engraved by Rocky Sharp. He's one of our, he's our local engraver. engravers, and he's phenomenal. Yes, he's um, very good. He's well known now. He, he really is. And so if you'll notice on this one, we did you know the, the matching amounts on frame and slide, but we left it simple. We didn't try to do anything that, you know, not trying to recreate the wheel here. Engraving is something a lot of people know nothing about when they first come in and want to do a gun, and they say, oh, I want the whole thing covered. So, well, maybe you do, but maybe yeah. you don't. You know, and, and I always tell my guys, I'll say, well, let's make sure it passes the turn test because the first thing my customer's going to do is they're going to turn it. Mm -hmm. They're going to turn it over. And if they see the perfect amount of engraving still at these areas as they turn the gun over, they're going to be happy and never, never look at it again. And if you flip it over and you see an area that's dead and there's nothing on it, yeah. that's when you're going to get that feeling in the pit of your stomach that something got missed. It's uh, like a wasteland there, just nothing nothing going on. Yeah. One of the general rule, of, general rule of thumb on a custom gun is if it makes me happy, it's usually gonna make my customer happy. Okay. I, you know, for me, I like minimalist engraving. I like a little at the muzzle, a little right in front of the frame, and then a little gilding around the frame. And, you know, just keep it minimum, maybe a little on the bottom of the trigger guard, just to know it's there. Right. You no, know, we care, but right. not full coverage for me. Now, and everybody's different. On this one, we did decide to go ahead and finish it off with Mammoth. It just completed the package. It does. It uh, do Again, you got that real dark finish, and then you got those light colored grips just flashing out at you, saying custom all the way. It does. We try to provide Mammoth Ivory grips for all of our projects that we put out. We even have them for other people's projects. Mm -hmm. It's something that we try to provide as a service to be able to offer these. And people people say, well, Mammoth Ivory, well, where does that come from? Well, it's it's an old product. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, that, uh, you know, it's we're not out killing mammoths for it. No. Nope, we're nope. just simply gathering it and harvesting it and yeah, it's completely legal building it into a viable product that will go for generations. Right. And over the years, you know, through the 50s and 60s, there were so many cheap plastic grips, you know, made to look like stag or ivory or whatever. But when you look at the real deal in person, you can see why they tried so hard to imitate it because the real stuff is gorgeous. Yes, Absolutely it really gorgeous. Is. It really is. Speaking of gorgeous, I've been looking at the ivory grips on that Model 19 over there. And that is nothing short of elegant. So this is a Smith & Wesson model 19-3. Mm -hmm. This came out of a recent collection we'd picked up. And uh, it was one of those deals where it had a, a little bit of alteration or modification here on the back. So we went ahead and completed and did a round butt modification, took the serrations off. When we got to that point, I said, let's just blue this thing. I'll color case the hammer and trigger. We'll go through the timing, make sure the timing's proper on it. And so you refinished the whole we did. Whole revolver. We did refinish the whole revolver. Probably the toughest refinish job as far as bluing goes. Imagine polishing. these Smith bluings. Yeah. I mean, this is a 100% hand polished gun. Yep. Um, you just can't go in and buff one of these. If you'll notice the writing, the, the roll marks, the lettering, it's all mm -hmm. as crisp and clear as it was. Well, I've seen a lot of them buffed and they are not pretty. And so we did, this is a set of white mammoth um, wanted it to do to be a uh, ivory appearing mm -hmm. uh, contrast on the between the blue and the ivory. This was my goal, and so I picked a, a pair of this clear 
white mammoth to, to go in and, and do the project. Well, that's an awful lot of options. Uh, you have any closing thoughts and advice for us on the custom gun world? Well, as I always say, we like to work for people who work for a living. Pull their work boots on and go to work and come home, play with their kids. And at, when you're building your custom gun, make it what you want it. Uh, and there's, there's, a, there's each side of the, of the platform here. Sure. You can go to super extreme or you can keep it simple but you can build an economical custom gun that you can stand on the line and shoot with anybody. You just have to get a plan, make sure you pick a qualified gunsmith to do it. Right. There's, there's so many good guys out there. There's, there are. There's a handful of really good, talented, good individuals. And so pick a good guy to build it and then stick to your plan. Stick to your plan and have a plan to begin with. Have a plan. Because that's the tough part, deciding what you want. A little research goes a long ways. Right. And um, it could be anything from an action job and new grips to full coverage engraving and everything that goes with that. That's correct. And I'm not just saying research old styles, old guns, your Skeeter Skelton, your Elmer Keiths. Research materials, research uh, grips, research leather makers. Oh, get online. There's a lot of neat stuff that's been going on out there for a long time. Once you get a, an idea on this and you come to myself or, or you or whoever's going to whoever's gonna put this project together, you can say, hey, what about this? What about this grip frame? What about that part? And obviously Brownells carries all of these different custom parts. And, carry a lot of them. And you can flip, th flip through your catalog or go online and you can pick the part that matches what they want mm -hmm. and walk them through it. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's my best advice is to know what you want and then execute it. Well, Bobby, it's been a pleasure. Thanks pleasure. for coming by. Thank you guys I learned for having a lot. me. Thank you for watching. And if you have any comments, leave them below. We want to hear about your custom guns or the guns you haven't built yet. Thanks again. We'll see you later.